Welcome to the IFRS patient education series. Today we are going to talk about uh, pneumoperitoneum or gases that we use for laparoscopic surgeries. Why should uh, we use gases in laparoscopic surgery? Because during laparoscopic surgery, the surgeons need space for operating. This is created by pumping in gases into the abdomen, which distance the abdomen and then gives uh, space for the surgeons to operate. One of the reasons that uh, we're going to discuss about it is that the marketing people make people believe that if it is expensive, it should be better. And many instances may not be true. Now, going back to the gases that we use, commonly carbon dioxide is used as the gas that is used for encephalation during laparoscopic surgery. This is chosen because it's a non-combustible gas. We use a cautery machine which generates heat and sparks. So if there is a gas which catches fire, it can be dangerous. Then it's again a common gas which is cleared by the body because uh, the body produces uh, carbon dioxide when they use uh, oxygen. And then uh, it is excreted uh, by the lungs. And it's also soluble in blood and other tissues. And the risk of gas embolism, which can be dangerous, is low with carbon dioxide. But then now many people, especially in the LMICs, they use the air instead of uh, carbon dioxide because it's easier to get. And uh, it's uh, easily available and less expensive. But what are the problems by using gas? One of the major problems which is that even though it is a very small amount, it's definitely there is the injuries which are caused by inserting the various ports that are used for surgery. The injuries can occur to the blood vessels or the gastrointestinal tract. And sometimes they may not even recognize it during the surgery. And half these injuries occur when you're inserting these uh, ports. The interesting thing is that uh, this complication rate has remained unchanged for the last uh, 20 years. And uh, why do these injuries occur? The, because the reason why it has not changed uh, over the 20 years is that the risk is irrespective of the experience of the surgeons. And obviously, it'll be more with the inexperienced surgeons. But even with experienced surgeons, because the additions can be there if the patient is muscular and if the surgeon lacks upper arm strength by lifting the abdominal wall, these injuries can occur. And in addition to these injuries, there are several side effects, primarily because it's a dry, cold gas which uh, can evaporate and cause hypothermia. Then it changes, uh, causes changes in the circulation because it presses on the blood vessels. And also, as we said earlier, it's absorbed and causes metabolic changes. And what is the effect of hypothermia? This causes difficulty during surgery because it uh, causes fogging of the lens. And uh, in the post-operative period, it causes uh, additions, which can lead to intestinal obstruction and so on in a much uh, later date. And it also has some uh, small but serious uh, effects on the heart. This is again because of the carbon dioxide which is absorbed. It can increase the blood pressure. It causes arrhythmias. It can cause a uh, vasovagal response and uh, decreased uh, output from the heart. These are things which are quite worrying for the anesthesiologist. And that's a reason why you need an expert anesthesiologist for laparoscopic surgeries. And uh, not only the heart, it also causes compression of the blood vessels. And uh, this activates uh, various uh, mechanisms in the body, which lead to the increased uh, blood pressure. So the Generally, what happens is that the blood pressure is uh, higher during laparoscopic surgeries. 
than during open surgeries. But then uh, it's uh, compensated a little bit because of the higher pressure on the smaller blood vessels, which uh, causes less bleeding. But then it increases the chance of embolism, which can be serious or deep vein thrombosis. And uh, as expected, because the abdomen is bloated, it presses on the lungs and has uh, various effects on the lungs, which make again uh, the job difficult uh, for the anesthesiologist. And uh, it also reduces the blood supply to the kidney and the hypertension and so on. It reduces the output uh, or the filtration rate from the kidneys, which lead to buildup of toxic substances in the blood. And also it uh, causes uh, serious effects on the gastrointestinal system, starting from decreasing the circulation, increasing the enzymes in the liver, and also it affects uh, bacterial uh, translocation, or as you said, the concern of the anesthesiologist. And if the surgery is a short one, less than one hour, these uh, changes are not very significant but they become very significant if the operation goes on for longer than an hour. And again, in a patient who's already compromised. But what is not serious and may look very dramatic is uh, what is called subcutaneous emphysema or gas in the gas leak in the subcutaneous tissue. So this can uh, make the patient look really bad, but then uh, it gets absorbed quite easily and uh, will be relieved soon after the surgery. And uh, not only the patients and anesthesiologists, it also causes problems to the surgeons because uh, if there is a bleed, then uh, the surgeon needs to suck out the blood to see where it is bleeding from. The moment you use suction, the demoperitoneum collapses, making it difficult to see. So these are complications which are there with the use of gases for conventional laparoscopic surgery. The conventional the gases, firstly, it makes uh, surgeries more expensive because you need to arrange gases. If you need to be safe, you need to arrange carbon dioxide, which is expensive. And then again, the equipment and instruments have to be specially designed to prevent gas leak and so on. So that again, make it uh, more expensive. Then you need the anesthesiology who's experienced to handle all the side effects or complications that occur. And the surgeon also need more skill to tackle these complications. So when you consider all these things, in rural areas, we use what is called a gasless laparoscopic surgeries, where gas is not used. Special instruments are used to elevate or lift the abdominal wall and do surgeries. And these are far better and much, much less expensive. So if you offered uh, gasless surgeries, go for it. Thank you.